This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 717, Love is Not a Thing, part 1, by Will Penny of BeBetterStupid.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show where I help you optimize your relationships. I am Greg Audino, and today we have part 1 of an awesome post about the L word, we'll call it, uh, by Will Penny of BeBetterStupid.com. Part 1 means there's a lot to sift through between today and tomorrow, so... Let's get right into it and start optimizing your life. Love is Not a Thing, Part 1, by Will Penny of BeBetterStupid.com We hear about how important love is all the time, and how we need it in so many ways. All you need is love. You have to love yourself before you can love someone else. You are committing with these vows to love this person until the day you die. You must love your child unconditionally. Choose love, not fear. Which, good God, how annoying. I mean, holy f***. Where do you even start with all that? How do you just cram the feeling of love into your brain more? How do you manifest those feelings chemicals in your skull? What an absolutely exhausting f***ing chore. The struggle to do this leads to a lot of thoughts, like... I'm currently feeling that my husband is a lazy sack of garbage. Am I failing at my marriage vows? People say you have to love yourself before you can love other people, but I generally feel indifferent about myself. I don't want to be single. How do I feel more love for myself? Am I a bad person because I mostly think my goth daughter is kind of a shithead? Aren't I supposed to love her no matter what? Are there actually people who love everybody? Am I an because I don't? No, right? Let's back up, because we're off base here. Consider first that love comes in like a billion forms. The forms of love. Love is you listening to your aunt's boring story so that she has someone to talk at. It's a description of how you feel about curly fries, and it's even a place that sometimes you get to be in. This love place is a magical land where some special person for you becomes superhuman. They become amazingly cute, funny, and insightful to you, even though everybody else on the planet looks at your boyfriend and is like, that guy? Really? Being in this loving place is the most incredible feeling we'll ever feel, so we assume that this love, the feeling of love, is what's really important. We assume that the feeling of love is what makes society function and what will save the world. We assume that the feeling of love is what John Lennon was singing about. And maybe it was. I don't know. I didn't know the guy. But if it was what he was singing about, the dude was wrong. Feeling love feels nice, and it's great motivation. But it's not why love really matters. It's not why all you need is love. Your feelings of love aren't the love that keeps families together, that connects you with strangers, and allows you to feel good about yourself. It's not the most important part of making this earth more tolerable. That love, that indispensable, all-important, you-need-this-to-function-in-all-areas-of-life love, is love as an action. To sum it up with John Mayer lyrics, love ain't a thing. Love is a verb. So the good news is, you don't actually have to feel any more love than you already do, which is nice, because you had zero control over that. And how can you possibly feel love for people like bigots, criminals, and Instagram influencers? The love you feel is in the big picture, pretty irrelevant. The love you show is f- everything, and this applies to all areas of your life. Loving your family. When you say, I love my spouse, brother, or grandma, you inevitably leave off two crucial words. Like, generally speaking, I love my wife. I very often have feelings of adoration, infatuation, appreciation, admiration, and joy that add up to love in her general direction. My most common feeling, if I have to sum it up, is definitely one of love. But not all the time. I don't feel love unconditionally. Of course not. What are you, insane? Have you seen literally any married couple? We share an entire life together. Do you realize how much time that is? I'll give you a hint. It's all of it. All of the time. No matter what, with any two people who are together that much, there are 1,000% going to be moments, even if they're rare, where our primary thought is, okay, go f*** yourself a little, my dear. We have millions of feelings a day, so by that nature, none of them can be unconditional. 
No love is perfect, and part of that imperfection is that sometimes we just don't feel the love we generally have, because there are a million things that can temporarily get in the way of that feeling. Sometimes the other person is f***ing annoying, and love feelings just aren't blasting through our brains. Sometimes you're really focused on this slice of pizza to the point where I love my husband isn't currently in your consciousness. Sometimes you experience a dip in dopamine, and your brain chemicals just aren't letting the love feeling in at the moment. I don't feel love for my wife all the time because literally nobody feels love for literally anything all the time. This is fine, because that's not what the vows of marriage mean. I won't always feel love for her for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health. I won't feel love towards my wife till death do us part. That will mostly come, but sometimes go. But I will act with love towards her, regardless of how I feel in a given moment. Even if my internal feeling is the aforementioned, go f*** yourself, my dear, I will show love every day. That is to say, that I will move heaven and earth to put her needs before my own as much as I can until one of us croaks. This is a crucial distinction to make. In all forms of love, this is what really matters. So no, in this way, you won't love your parents, your siblings. You won't even love your kids unconditionally. I mean, of course not. Have you met literally any 13-year-old? No one actually feels love for a 13-year-old. I'm not buying it. They remember the big picture of love they generally feel for them and show them love with the hope in mind that one day they won't be so like a 13-year-old. This applies to everyone you love. Regardless of how you feel right now towards someone you love, you must show them love at all times, to always act with their best interest in mind and act with care and grace for them. If you do this, you're doing your job, and you're putting the love into the world that it needs, even if at this moment your kid is a addicted f To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Love is Not a Thing by Will Penny of BeBetterStupid.com. And thank you to Will for the start of an insightful and uh, lighthearted post. <laughs> I am looking forward to sharing the rest of his article with you tomorrow and offering some thoughts afterwards. So be sure not to miss out. I will talk to you guys then where your optimal life awaits.